It's been a long time coming, but simmers finally have a hands-on control in the development of Microsoft Flight Simulator. This week saw the release of the first batch of player-improved and updated airports. It's a big deal for the sim, and there's plenty more to come. Elsewhere, Sim Update 15 is on the way, and Microsoft have detailed patch notes on it. More on this in just a moment. So at the newly improved airport, these arrived in a small patch that was released this week. It wasn't a small number of airports either, 68 in fact, and here's a list of them on the screen right now. For those that haven't heard about this before, the way all of this works is through a new tool called the World Hub. From this, any user can go in and modify an airport, airfield or airstrip. Once done, these changes are uploaded to Microsoft for approval. Then, once approved, Microsoft will roll them out in small mini-updates like the one released this week. It means that Flight Simulator will now be continuously updated to make it ever more accurate. The World Hub is currently in closed beta and has been so since around the middle of January. As yet, there doesn't seem to be a release date for when the World Hub will be fully available to everyone. Hopefully though, that won't be too far away. Now, back on the subject of Sim Update 15. The latest roadmap shows that it is set for release sometime in March. Incidentally, something I want to touch on here, the subject of roadmaps. For many years, Microsoft have released regular development roadmaps for the Sim. These have always been fantastic and give good insight as to when to expect things and largely what to expect. The last development roadmap ended at the end of January, and as yet, we haven't seen a new one. This is a bit of a shame, and I do hope that they actually continue. Meanwhile, though, we do still have the product and update release roadmap, which is still very handy nonetheless. So, update 15, Sim Update 15 is set for March. Here's some of the changes and improvements that we can expect to see. It seems then that quite a bit of this update is focused on finally improving, or once again improving, performance and FPS. So for something here, they say improved FPS, particularly where FPS was low. There's no specifics on that, uh, so largely I guess that could mean absolutely anything. But it seems to me that anyone who was experiencing low FPS will probably be happy with that if it actually helps them out. There's also some work going into reducing the stutters, particularly after long gameplay sessions, and this is something that does cause a problem with those really long flights, particularly, uh, well, continental flights, intercontinental flights. There's also something going in to here with reduced loading times, and for anyone who's used a sim for any length of time, you'll know that those loading times can be very long indeed. There's also a change coming in, a sim update 15 for weather. This is to do with lakes icing up, particularly in the snowy regions such as Swiss lakes and the Norwegian fjords. Now, because Microsoft Flight Simulator cannot physically simulate water icing up, it doesn't have that capability, the way Sober have got around this is to simulate it by simply saying that any area that has a snow buildup of 27 centimeters will have nearby water automatically frozen. That obviously meant that far too many lakes around the world were frozen so now Asobo are increasing that threshold from 27 centimeters up to 72 centimeters, and that will uh, limit the amount of wrongly frozen water around the world. So it's really kind of a patch rather than a full-on fix. It still doesn't mean that, that water, frozen water is going to be fully simulated, but hopefully it will reduce down many of the inaccuracies. Elsewhere, we can expect to see some fixes with ground contact resolution improvements, uh, basically where planes are touching down, and this will mean a more accurate ground contact model. There's also going to be an optional soft ground collision model for tyres and flexible gears. I'm not sure uh, how the option on this will actually work. It's been enabled though for the soft gears on the Cessna 172 and the Cabri. Now, another very big thing, a big change that's going to come in with Sim Update 15, and this isn't necessarily something that we're all going to be able to appreciate and see directly straight away, but it is going to help third-party developers of various aircraft. And what this is, is adding multi-rotor support for helicopters, particularly the Chinook and other dual rotors. Up until now, this is something that hasn't been directly simulated within the engine, and uh, I guess any uh, dual motors and uh, dual rotors that have been put out there by third parties have kind of had to hack their way to having this simulated. On the screen right here, we can see some footage of the dual rotor physics in action. Now, in terms of practical use, Miltech simulations are currently working on a Chinook, which is set to be released very soon. 
Hopefully, they will be using all of these new physics and simulation models in the Chinook to make it the best possible version they actually can. Hopefully, we'll hear more details on that very soon. So that then covers all the latest details for Microsoft Flight Simulator. Relatively a short video this week, but wanted to get you all up to date. Meanwhile, why not check out the other video on the screen right here. I'll catch you next time.